Welcome back to the Ken's podcast, The Wellness Day with Lucky. I'm your host, Esther Lucky. Today we are joined by Dr. Richard Knebel. That's right. Hello, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Consultant orthopedic surgeon here at Ken's. And he'll be taking us on a deep dive into hip arthritis. That's Dr. correct. Dr. Knebel, not Nibble. Knebel, yeah. <laughs> you could also say Dr. Richard. That's Dr. Richard. That's easier. Thank you for joining us today. It's a, it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding arthritis, we hear this word uh, getting thrown around a lot. What exactly is arthritis? Well, arthritis, the name tells it, says it already, it's an inflammation in the joint. Okay, so you have lots of joints, so you've got lots of arthritis. But there are several forms of arthritis as well. So mm -hmm. the most common one is osteoarthritis. Right. And that's not really the correct name. It should be called osteoarthrosis. Or oh. arthrosis deformance. Why is that? Because it, the osteoarthritis is a problem from the cartilage. And the cartilage can become inflamed. Mm -hmm. And then it swells up and it causes pain. And then that's what we call arthritis. But some forms do, do come without swelling. So that means that those are ones should not be called arthritis, but more like arthrosis. But in general, everybody calls it osteoarthritis anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it is. So a problem from the cartilage. In the joint. Well, of course, what exactly is it? What kind of problem it is? Now, yeah. now, you know that the joints, they're covered with cartilage. And cartilage is like a little sponge, really, yeah, that keeps mm -hmm. the joint nice and smooth and moving. So it's about 80% water and 20% substance. So yeah. what happens now, if you put pressure on the cartilage, you press out the water and the substance is left over. And the substance does not like pressure. So when the pressure is too high, for instance, mm -hmm. when you jump and fall on it, or the pressure has been there for too long a time. For instance, when you sit in the chair for a long time, stand in the same position for a long time, or get older than 20 years of age, the cartilage becomes gradually thinner and thinner, mm -hmm. and that's what we call osteoarthritis. So uh, when it grows thin and yeah. thin and thin, yeah. that's yeah. arthritis. So that what happens correct. when it's no longer there? Uh, so, so when it's not more there anymore, then, of course, you have bare bone against each other. Eh? Yeah, sounds and that, painful. Yeah, exactly. It is painful as well. But it's only painful, really, if there's still a little bit of cartilage left over. So if there's no cartilage at all in the joint mm -hmm. and you've worn off all the cartilage and the bony surfaces are still nice and flat and smooth, you can get away with it. Oh. But the problem is that quite a few people, they still have a little bit of cartilage in the joint and that can cause a lot of problems. Wow. Which we don't really know exactly what causes the pain, but that's what we tell everybody around because that's how it normally is. So it's either you have enough of cartilage or you don't have any cartilage. That's Otherwise, correct. if you have so little, then you're in trouble. That is correct. That's correct. So initially you have the cartilage thick and firm. Then it's thick and, uh, thick and soft, eh? and that's when the symptoms start to come. And then you have that cartilage become thinner and thinner. Mm -hmm. And then you have certain degrees where the cartilage has gone for 25% or for 50%, or sometimes completely gone, and then you have bare bone. Mm -hmm. That's basically what is the development of the osteoarthritis in the joint. Oh, okay. eh? oh, all right. And, of course, you've got different kinds of arthritis. So you've mm -hmm. got osteoarthritis, eh, which is the most common one. Mm -hmm. And that's where the cartilage becomes thinner and thinner and then it disappears. And at the same time, the underlying bone can also show changes. And then, of course, you have the other ones, which is rheumatoid arthritis, where mm -hmm. you have more like inflammatory conditions. That goes through the whole of the body. Eh? So it's not just in the knee or in the hip, but it's also in the small joints. Eh? But in orthopedics, we normally deal with the bigger joints, the weight-bearing joints. Mm -hmm. At least that's my specialist area. So mm -hmm. hip replacements and knee replacements. Eh? Those are the joints that are the nice one to deal <laughs> with, eh? according to my opinion, of course. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so when you have an osteoarthritis of the hip, the problem is that sometimes it hurts and sometimes it doesn't. doesn't, yeah. Okay, yeah. I've seen that. But... Uh, you know what, when you, when you have arthritis on the hip, it's very common, very common. And uh, you have difficulties in doing certain things, such mm -hmm. as getting up from a low chair. It's an issue. Getting in and out of a low car, putting on your shoes and socks. You have difficulties in walking up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And when you walk, you waddle like a duck sometimes, okay? and Walks these like a duck. Yeah. Walks like a duck. Exactly. Maybe yeah. a duck. It, <laughs> that's true, but sometimes it can be hip osteoarthritis yeah, as well. Exactly, that's yeah. funny, man. So, but uh, so those are the signs from osteoarthritis in the hip joint. And because 
what happens when you have arthritis in the hip, you put pressure on the cartilage and the joint becomes inflamed and it causes pain. And the body is smart because it doesn't like the pressure on the cartilage. Mm -hmm. So the body then builds these bony spurs around the joint and that makes the joint stiff. Because the body thinks, well, listen, if I put pressure on the cartilage, I get more pain. So if I limit the movement, there will be less pressure on the cartilage and there will be less pain. Yeah. But then the brain takes over and the brain says, I'm still young, I need to do more of exercises and suddenly you get more pain. So osteoarthritis from the hip, the more exercises you do, the more pain you get. Whilst osteoarthritis of the knee, mm -hmm. the more exercises you do, the better you get because the knee joint is a flat joint, like a saddle joint, mm -hmm. whilst the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. So you can still do exercise and you should do exercises, but you should ex do exercises without the twisting movements because that causes the pain and the problems with the joint itself. Oh, okay, doctor, thank you so much. I have to ask this. Yeah. What are the common causes of hip uh, osteoarthritis and maybe uh, the risk factors? Yeah, well, we don't know what causes it. Oh. That's the problem. And so sometimes we have that you, you are born, okay, with uh, not the exactly round hip ball, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit flatter. And when the hip ball is a little bit flatter, then you have the forces acting on the joint that go not as they should be. And then you develop osteoarthritis eh, because of the uneven load distribution in the joint. Sometimes we have a fracture and sometimes we have some inflammatory reaction with crystals in the joint or like the rheumatoid arthritis, like we mm -hmm. said before. But most of the time, we don't know what causes it. Eh? Mm. But there are risk factors. Though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So age is one of the risk factors because in the end everybody gets it but not everybody needs to have pain and then of course if you're a little bit overweight it doesn't help it does not make it really worse for the hip arthritis it I does mean, make it worse for the knee arthritis the podcast i've spoken to yeah. i think 17 doctors yeah and they'll tell you 99 percent yeah. they blame obesity no every disease known to mind no 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 not not really so f for knee osteoarthritis Increasing weight is indeed a problem, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. but for hip osteoarthritis, that link has not been there. So of course, when you do a hip operation, so mm -hmm. I rather want you to have less weight because it makes my life easier, okay, but it doesn't really matter. Eh? Ah. But there are certain uh, 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 groups of people who have a greater chance of developing osteoarthritis. Eh? So mm -hmm. for, for knee arthritis, we know there's firemen who are very interested because they need to walk up and down the ladder all the time. Yeah. But farmers, they are normally prone to have hip osteoarthritis because they sit on the tractor and they have twisting and movements all the time. All right. Jumping up and down. And that's why you see with farmers, they have a greater chance for developing of hip osteoarthritis. Okay. But there's not really any other causative factor. So mm -hmm. sadly, because if we knew it, we could prevent it happening. Eh? And so, so far, the research has not found anything like that yet. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll ask you this. Let's assume um, I have osteoarthritis yeah. of the hip. Yeah. I don't know I have. Yeah. What symptoms should I be looking at? And at what point should I actually come and see you yeah. and stop taking the Panadols and other well, uh, pain meds? The thing is that here, yeah, you become stiffer in your hip. So that means that you will have difficulties, as I said before, to get up from a low chair, putting on the shoes and socks. So if you get these kind of symptoms, you know something is going on. Mm. You can then modify your activities, which normally helps, and you can crack on with life as well. But if it comes with pain and you cannot get control of the pain, then you need to come and see me. Okay. You start then with the simple paracetamol tablets that is there to diminish the pain. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. You can try some anti-inflammatories, eh? but they can upset the stomach, so they're not the main mm -hmm. treatment, really, yeah, because they cause too many side effects. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah? So I'm going to see all this um, bone joint tablets being yeah. sold yeah. for yeah. Yeah. joint pain and all that. Do yeah. they really work, especially for arthritis? Well, they have done some studies, eh? and they found that glucosamine and chondroitin could help in maintaining the cartilage in as good condition as possible. Mm -hmm. You need to take it for a minimum of three months uh, because that's the time these products need to become incorporated in the cartilage. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth month, you could notice an effect. However, 
it works in only 52% of the people. So it's, from it's a large perspective, a lot. it's not a lot. Mm. So you can flick a coin yeah. and then you have better results sometimes, right? Yeah. That's, but you know what? If you try it for four months and your pain in the hip goes away, fantastic. Yeah. Then you've got a 100% well, success rate. Huh? So, But uh, there's lots of products on the market, turmeric and uh, uh, cumin, uh, you name it. Everybody thinks it. I've not seen any research that says that it works, mm -hmm. but try it. And if it works, tell me, because then I can give it to my patients and maybe <laughs> help them as well. Eh? So mm -hmm. that's the problem, and because there's lots of things on the market, and uh, if it wouldn't work, it would not be on the market. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's the sure. that's the thing. So health food supplements are good, mm -hmm. but they don't always work. That's yeah. the problem. Eh? So that's all right, all right, great, good to know. So, uh, so now I've realized that something sinister is going on with my hip. Yeah. And the anti-inflammatory tablets and uh, brufen, they're not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come to see. Yeah. What are my options? Well, there's really two options. Huh? Because physiotherapy, you have done that already, and physiotherapy normally makes the pain around the hip worse. Uh -huh. But it helps in maintaining a good muscle balance. So physiotherapy is good to keep the muscle balance, but they will not be able normally to increase the movement because you have the bony spurs around the joint that limit the movement. So you cannot break through that. So physiotherapy, you have done that already. And then you have really two options. One is injections, mm -hmm. uh, injections with different kind of medications, such as cortisone is good to diminish the inflammation and the swelling and the pain. Mm -hmm. But of course, it doesn't cure the arthritis. Mm -hmm. Okay, And the real cure is, of course, the total hip replacement. And that's a fantastic yeah. operation. It's a fantastic, fantastic operation. So okay. I like it myself. Right? Okay. That's, that's I can it. see the joy in your face. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> it is good. It is good. It is good. Eh? So speaking of hip replacement, yeah, you mentioned to me the other day that uh, this month you're marking 60 years old. It's true. So the hip replacement in the common form, how we use it now, mm -hmm. it was developed in the 1960s. And to be honest, in November 1962, when... Mm -hmm. So John Charlie developed the first hip replacement, mm -hmm. as we know it now, uh, with a metal bit on one side and a plastic bit on the other side. Mm -hmm. And he put it in the bone with bone cement, so it was steady straight away. And before that, people have tried to do lots of kind of uh, replacements. So they used Teflon, mm -hmm. they used uh, metal on metal, they used uh, whatever. You can, you can name it or so, even some ivory as well, I think, a long mm -hmm. time ago. Eh? But none of them were working for the longer time. You had a lot okay. of side effects. But then in 1962, that's when uh, John Charlie put in the metal on polyethylene and that seemed to be working very well. Eh? And it has developed over the years or so. So there's lots of things that could be better. But mm -hmm. basic principle is still the same, metal against plastic. And that's what we celebrate 60 years now. So we can maybe light a candle or something like that. Yes, so you're just talking about the prosthetics. Yes. The hip joint prosthetics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which ones? Um, which ones do you use, or which ones are used for the hip? Yeah. So you got basically the, the basic thing is you got a metal stem, and that's the part that goes into the thigh bone, mm -hmm. and on top of that you have a little ball. Okay. And then on the other side, in the pelvic bone, that's where you got the the acetabular components, which is the cup. So you have a ball and a socket joint. Mm -hmm. Now the ball, we used to have it in metal. But we can also do it in ceramics, okay? Yeah. And ceramics is a little bit tougher material. But then on the other side, the socket, that's where normally the issue is. So we started with polyethylene, which is like a plastic. And we saw that that showed some wear and tear, okay? So when you put too much pressure on it, it starts to become thinner and thinner, and then the prosthesis loosens. So the engineers, they have been working on it. So they have now come up with a very tough plastic, which is triple uh, strength, mm -hmm. and that shows very much uh, degrade, uh, a lower degradation rate, uh, so it lasts for a longer time. But it means that people have also started to use ceramic against ceramics, which is good. People have to reinvent the metal on metal uh, um, uh, idea again. But all these kind of things, they have side effects, and they yeah. don't seem to be working as well as what we hoped. So basically, people come back to either the metal on the plastic or the ceramic on the plastic mm -hmm. that's about and that's the and that's what you call the hip revision no 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 that's okay. a hip replacement uh, so we want to avoid a hip so if revision, they come back after having a yeah, hip so, yeah so normally the hip mm -hmm. prosthesis they last for 15 to 20 years mm -hmm. if not longer 
and if then the prosthesis shows wear and tear so if the plastic becomes thinner and then it starts to loosen up then you need to do the revision operation so mm -hmm. that means that you get the old stuff out and put a new one in and depending on how bad the bone loss is you can either do another prosthesis with a longer stem and you put some bone graft in it or you use special prosthesis that are coated with special substance you use some mm -hmm. metal meshes you use bubbles and lots of nice interesting things or so but of course the, the the issue is we want to avoid a revision so that's why we try to wait with the hip replacement as long as practically possible provided of course that we can find an alternative way to settle the pain but yeah. the, if we cannot get rid of the pain then we do the hip replacement eh? mm -hmm. so uh, even if the patient is only 26 years of age it oh. doesn't matter okay mm -hmm. yeah and some people do even younger ones but you need to think about that if you do an operation on a young individual the chances are great that you need to end up with a revision operation mm -hmm. but that might never happen in the future okay so it's better to do the hip replacement when you have pain so you can get rid of the pain and you can enjoy your life again mm -hmm. that's what it's all about yeah. so it's most of it is probably the best operation that you can get well I heard that cataract surgery for the eyes it's number one because mm. blind people can see again really yeah 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 but the hip replacement operation is the second best operation in the whole of the wild world because mm -hmm. people who cannot walk and have a lot of pain they can suddenly get back to their normal actions again so it's yeah, so fantastic basically the goal of the surgery is uh, regaining back uh, one's quality of life exactly mm -hmm. that's what it is i get rid of the pain improve the quality of life mm -hmm. fantastic isn't it uh, amazing it, it amazing. is amazing yeah. it is amazing yeah. and I, i'm astonished every time when i see it again it's, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure it's a pleasure okay. to help people eh? so now i've decided to have my hip replaced yes how long does the procedure last and how long before I'm able to run again? Ah, well, okay. So you know that the, the procedure is normally metal against plastic, okay? So mm -hmm. it takes some time to put it in the bone. So we use sometimes a cemented version, which is mainly that we put the prosthetic components into the body with bone cement. And that that's what we do with older people. So over the age of 70 or 65 or so, uh, below that, we know that the bone quality is normally better. Mm -hmm. That's when we use an uncemented hip prosthesis because that's where the bone grows onto the prosthesis. Mm. So that's what we do. So the operation itself lasts between, uh, it takes about one hour if you do an uncemented one and one and a half hour or so if you use a cemented one because we need to let the cement harden first, which takes 15 really? minutes or two times 15 minutes. Huh? When you talk, when you say it like that, it sounds pretty. Uh... It, 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 it is quite nice. It's quite nice. So, and you know what? We are the carpenters of the body, all right? So we like this kind of stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's only one and a half hours. Eh? Sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes a little bit longer. But there is cement and there is yeah, plastic yeah, nice. and yeah. there is metal. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Eh? But, so the operation itself takes about one and a half hours or so. Eh? Then afterwards, because you... Uh, you uh, go inside the joint you need to go past the muscles so the muscles and the soft tissues they need to heal again mm -hmm. and that takes about three to four months okay mm -hmm. so the first three to four months you're walking around just like you do in the in the beginning with a crutch or something or a walking stick just for balancing purposes. so is there a point to a uh, one loses their range of motion they're, they're, they're supposed to just stay in bed or just sit no no no, no 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 you need to come up out of the bed straight away mm -hmm. yeah. so once the operation is done so you can just start walking around yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, we want to improve that uh, so as soon as you come out of the operation room and you go to the recovery room and the anesthetic has worn off i come by to you and i said come on move uh. so move start moving your leg uh, bend the knee bend the foot and the ankle or so wow. because you need to reactivate the muscles again mm -hmm. uh. And then once you can reactivate the muscles, you get up out of the bed, you start to walk around, first with a little frame or a walking stick for support mm -hmm. until you have regained your confidence. Eh? And then you walk around and then uh, normally after a couple of days, sometimes quicker, sometimes a little bit longer, you go back home, okay? You can already walk in the stairs. So with those kind of things, so you do your normal bits and pieces like you used to be before as well and then it takes about three four months for the muscles to have healed to the full extent mm -hmm. and then after three four months 
you're like a new woman again. All right, that's what's amazing. That's amazing. And you can, I, I can get back to my sporting activities and all. Yes and no. Okay, so not all the sporting activities are, of course, good because you need to think is that it's metal against plastic. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not a normal hip; it's an artificial hip. Okay, so it comes with limitations. So we do the operation to get rid of the pain. You will get better movement, but of course, if you mishandle your prosthesis it will of course not last as long as if you don't mishandle it eh? swimming you can do badminton golf you name it those kind of things walking is not a problem eh? some people even try running although it's not such a good idea okay it's not some advisable no because it, it's not really advisable because the forces are enormous okay mm -hmm. and that means that you get more wear and tear mm -hmm. okay you can do it you can do it and if if running is your life do it but beware because the hip replacement which normally lasts 15 to 20 years this time it might just last for five years or so eh? and then i have to do the revision all right yeah, eh? let me think but, uh, running compared to five years before i do a revision i'll take the running i think it's a wise idea <laughs> for you eh? because if running is your life mm -hmm. that's what you do okay yeah, yeah. But th these are the things that you need to be well aware of. You need to be well aware of why do you do the operation, which is for pain relief. It's to improve the quality of life and get back into your normal actions. And if running is your life, that's what is your life. And yeah. then you take the consequences yeah. if they come. You have right. to deal with the responsibilities. That is correct. Yeah. And, and we can just guide you in that situation. Mm -hmm. So so but, uh, so say good luck. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. <laughs> right. Talk to you. Okay. Before I let you go. I have to ask you. Yeah. Does the hip replacement guarantee that there won't be any more pain as a result of the arthritis? Does it completely go away? Well, most of the time, yes. Okay. Most of the time. Sometimes you have some little bit of pain around the hip joint, which is normally not the pain from the hip joint itself, mm -hmm. but it's either pain coming from the muscles. Or paining come from a, coming, pain coming from the back or the knee joint, okay? As sometimes, most of the time, pain in the hip comes from the hip joint, mm -hmm. but sometimes pain in the hip can come from the back. Mm -hmm. So you deal then with the operation, you deal with the hip pain. Mm -hmm. But if there's some residual pain left over, it can be coming from the muscles around the hip or from the back region. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is also important why you need to come and see your orthopedic surgeon because although you feel the pain in the hip, it cannot, it does not always come from the hip joint. So if your hip pain comes from the back, that means the hip replacement will not make you better. If your pain comes from the hip, then the hip replacement will make you better. And that's why you have normally more than 95% excellent results. And so the mm -hmm. pain will have gone. Only a few people who have still some residual pain, but normally that settles as well. And if your pain comes from the back, normally exercises can make it better. Right. And before the operation of the hip, you could not do the exercises because the hip was too painful. So if you then do the hip mm -hmm. operation, the hip pain goes away, and then you can do the exercise for the back, uh -huh. and that makes the back pain better. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Brilliant, brilliant. Perfect. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. It was a pleasure having you here. It was a pleasure to be here as well. To having you again here. Perfect, perfect. Oh, it's a right. pleasure. So uh, enjoy. Thanks, yeah. Esther. Thanks. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Richard, consultant orthopedic surgeon here at Kent's. Until next time, goodbye.